Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, the previous speaker was from Paris. Uh, I'm just close to San Diego, so not that far. Um, but I'm also speaking from my home. So you see this wonderful virtual background behind me. Today, we would like to talk about cross-platform ray tracing, mostly for games. And the way we implemented it in our rendering framework, the Forge. Um, along the way, we will also show some benchmark results comparing Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and iOS performance. So on the call is Manas Kulkarni, one of our main architects who actually designed and wrote the Forge, and then myself, Wolfgang Inko. Uh, the agenda is uh, we will give a short overview over the Forge open source rendering framework that you can find on GitHub. Uh, then I will talk for a bit longer about how we actually do cross-platform ray tracing. Uh, we are looking at a demo. So I will have one running on my machine, and then I will run the Windows part, and then Manas will run on a Mac OS machine, a MacBook Pro, actually. Uh, then a short note about future development, and we also have a support channel. Uh, that comes at the end of the slide. So if someone is interested in discussing that further, we have a Discord channel set up for cross-platform ray tracing. All right, so what is the Forge? Uh, generally, it's a cross-platform rendering framework and then also a ray tracing framework. These two are actually separate. They have their own interface. So you can use either one or the other, or you can use both. You can find it on GitHub. At least the public part is there. All the console platforms are not there. The idea behind the framework is um, if a game developer wants to add new target platforms to a game engine, like for example, they are running on Windows, but now they also want to run on PS5. Um, you have two ways to approach this. Either you take the current engine and you add the PS5 code, or you use our interface, and then you get all the target platforms that the Forge supports. Um, this is for a company which exists since 11 years. This is one of our main um, businesses. We are adding you know, features and new target platforms to game engines. So here are the target platforms that are currently supported. So we have Windows 10 with DirectX 12 and Vulkan, and then there's DXR. We also have now really stable DirectX 11 support with Windows 7. Originally, we thought we, we make that a fallback, but now one of the games we're helping with actually will ship on DirectX 11 and also have Windows 7 support. Um, we support Linux, but only one Linux version, Ubuntu, um, and uh, with Vulkan 1.1, and then also RTX ray tracing. We also support Android Pi. Um, the next update, actually, that you will see on GitHub will have a much more Android Pi support. Um, we support macOS, iOS. We're hoping that this year uh, a game will actually ship on macOS. So the current runtime is kind of like tailored to the Steam user group. So we looked at the Steam hardware survey and uh, made sure that we support all the Mac OS versions that are used by Steam users. We support all of the Xboxes. How many there are? Um, we support PS4, PS4 Pro, and we also support now PS5. Um, our expectation is that at least one game will ship on the Xbox, on all the Xboxes. And then uh, we're hoping that two games actually ship on PS5 this year, uh, and at least one game on PS4. And then Switch, uh, we know that one game will ship this year with this uh, rendering framework. We also support Google Stadia. We, we helped Google with the Stadia platform. We're helping them since more than, I think, one and a half years now. 
Okay, so what's the motivation? Why do we have a cross-platform rendering framework? Um, the idea is you can reach more gamers with different hardware preferences. You can reuse your art assets. When you look at game production, probably the majority of cost you have in the production process comes from art assets. So you want to re reuse them on as many platforms as possible so that you're, you can reach your return of investment faster. And so the cross-platform rendering framework is just you know, one part of it um, to actually make that happen. And the hard part about cross-platform rendering frameworks is that you have to test all the time. Uh, we have a huge hardware testing set up in the office and whoever wants to commit code to our internal GitLab server, uh, we'll have to wait until all the hardware testing is done. If you go to the GitHub repository, you can um, use these instructions to set up. They're also on the wiki page. All right, so that was kind of like generally the forge. Let's talk about cross-platform ray tracing now. We'll make it like this. I think that's better. Uh, there are various APIs. So DirectX has an API that's called DXR. It's a dedicated API for writing hardware accelerated ray tracing applications. And then Vulkan offers something very similar. It's called RTX. macOS iOS offers NPS ray intersector. It lets you only pass in an array of rays and returns an array of intersections. So the intersections are um, computed on the GPU, but not more. I'll talk about this in a second. Uh, we want to make cross-platform ray tracing as easy as possible. And so our ray tracing interface mostly follows at this moment, uh, the DXR RTX idea. I'll show you the interface on the next slide. And then we added functionality on top of this, on top of metal to offer the same feature set as DXR RTX. Actually, at the moment, the feature set for Metal is even more, uh, because Metal has a denoiser, and we haven't implemented a denoiser for DXR RTX in our demo. All right, here's the interface. We don't need to go into too much detail here, just to give you an idea. So it's about, let's, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine functions that are generic. Um, so we're checking if ray tracing is supported and then we're initializing ray tracing. And so the whole idea of this interface is, yeah, you can do rasterized rendering, but then you can also add ray tracing. Um, so you can kind of like in the same application code, you can um, add ray tracing by just using that interface. We have a couple of special functions for metal, mostly for denoiser. All right, let's go for 30 seconds through how DXR and RTX works. Um, and then we compare it with macOS. So generally, you dispatch a set of rays through a ray generation shader and then test against an acceleration structure. This intersection test can be done either using a fixed function triangle intersection shader or a programmable AABB intersection shader. When an intersection is encountered, um, there can be two hit shaders involved. So there's a closest hit shader and an, or an any hit shader that kind of like reacts to the intersection. The closest hit shader executes code similar to your typical material pixel shader. It can also dispatch more rays for effects such as shadow and indirect lighting. The demo actually shows one bounce indirect lighting. Um, so you will see this in action. The any hit shader is used to decide whether to continue the rays trace ray tracing or accept the current hit and enter search. This is commonly used for alpha blending and simple shadow effects. 
in case the ray hits nothing, the mist shader gets invoked. And you can use that for filling the background with a skybox or solid color. The control flow between all those shaders is recursive. So that means everything ends up back at the ray generation shader. OK, so these were my 30 seconds DXR RTX. So now we're comparing this to metal. Metal ray tracing only supports ray intersections on the GPU and does not support recursion within shaders. To support a DXR style interface on the app level, we implemented tail recursion for metal. Now we'll just go through how tail recursion uh, was implemented. Uh, you can find all this in the source code. So if you go to the GitHub repository, download it. Uh, you can run the same demo that I will run in a couple of minutes and also look at the source code. But that's the high level view on what it does. So to implement tail recursion for metal, um, we have to find out which shader actually to run for each intersection. And so the first thing we do is we, write, we run a classification shader. This classification shader assigns each ray pixel its next shader. And then it also stores for each ray pixel the shader indices in what we call a shader index buffer. And then a radix sort sorts the shader index buffer on the GPU. From the shader index buffer, we can build an offset buffer. There's so much shit happening. Sorry? <laughs> don't know what that was. Keep, keep going, sorry. I don't know what that was. From the shader index buffer, um, we can build an offset buffer. And um, this buffer will hold the offset between the first ray and the last ray for each shader. And then after that, we can build an indirect buffer that contains the information from the previous buffers, so offset, count, and number of threat groups, which we call indirect buffer. And with that indirect buffer, we can dispatch all the shaders. So if there are no active rays for a shader, it will early out before the shader runs, minimizing the overhead. So this is kind of like the bird's eye view on how we implemented tail recursion for metal so that we get the same feature set for metal that we also have for DXR and RTX. And so to prove that all this works, we implemented a demo. And so it's sponsor, it's a sponsor pass tracer. Uh, I'll show this demo in a second. I just want to talk first about the features. So it, it supports ray trace shadows. It has one bound start indirect lighting. And for macOS and iOS, it also supports a denoiser. Uh, the closest hit shader dispatches additional rays for shadows and number of arrays for indirect lighting. And then the mist shader actually outputs the blue for the sky. So when you look at this picture, you have a rough idea where these come from. So now let's see if I can share my screen and show you a demo. Give me a second. All right, this should be in the, you should see now Visual Studio. So that's on my machine here. And I'm running actually a 2070 RDX, RTX car here at home. And here's the demo. And so now I can change the light direction. You can see how the path tracer, how it changes. runs on my machine with about 6.3 milliseconds. And then you can see that the GPU times are split up into pass tracing the scene, it's 5.8. And then copy the render results is 0.09 or 0.10. Uh, 
Um, so this is kind of like in the expected range. Manas, do you want to show? Do you want to show the macOS demo? Is he still here? <laughs> yes, he's here. We just um, he's muted and. Um, See there, he's unmuted. Yeah, so and the demo on Mac OS. There we go. And his video is off. Manus, do you want to you put your video on? Yeah, so here's the sponsor running on Mac OS with the denoiser. It's using the default metal denoiser, which has five iterations. As you can see, the performance is not good, but that's a hardware limitation. Yeah, it's currently running on a, what is it running on, an Intel integrated GPU or? Running on a Radeon Pro 580. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think on an iMac it's faster, right? We have also iMac numbers. Yeah, so that's the demo. Wonderful, thank you. All right, I'll go back to my slide deck now. Okay, can you see my slide deck? Yes. Wonderful. All right, so we measured performance. Um, we have one machine in the office um, that we consider really fast. Um, and so this is our Windows 10 machine. And so we can run DirectX 12 and Vulkan on there um, just by picking the API. And so you can see how they compare. They're about the same. So the graphics card is a 2080. We're about six, 6 6.2 milliseconds overall. And then below six is the ray tracing. And then we lose some some performance to copy the swap chain copying for the C. And then with Vulkan is actually slightly lower, same machine. Um, I don't know actually how we measured them. Did we measure them by just taking a hundred manas? A hundred frames and then averaged or? Because yeah, this is uh, average over uh, around a hundred frames. Yeah, yeah. okay. And then the interesting part is that the Ubuntu machine we have in the office is nearly a millisecond faster. Uh, same scene, same setup, same RTX. Although the machine is actually, it has, we, we put the same graphics card in there, um, but it's generally a little bit weaker or we would consider it weaker than the DirectX, uh, than the Windows machine. And then we have an iMac in the office that has a Radeon Pro 580. And so we're, there we're about you know, 78 milliseconds. Um, I'm guessing a, a much more modern AMD GPU would speed that up substantially. Um, but I mean, the point of a pass tracer is, is obviously not, it's not like a game. So um, this, these are all great numbers already. Uh, if you do tools, so you, you build tools for games, right? You wanna, for example, pre-bake light maps. Um, this is a setup that is already pretty quick on, on most hardware uh, for doing that. 
Okay, then we also measured on the iPhone. Astonishingly, you would think an iPhone um, is so far off, right? But you just saw Mana's MacBook Pro, it was actually slower than this iPhone. Mm, now, one thing that's missing here is I don't know what the resolution of the iPhone uh, application was. If we actually ran full screen or not, we should have mentioned that. But you can see that it's not, you know, it's astonishingly fast. Uh, and that's also not the latest iPhone. I think that's just the one we have in the office for testing. So the future development for us is um, we're looking towards the new extensions that are available on PC uh, to get out of the black box that DXR and RTX is. And then obviously next gen console support, which we obviously can't say anything about. Um, and so the next iteration will have a common interface that spans the next gen consoles and PC, Linux, and Mac OS and iOS. Um, will be interesting to see the performance numbers. Okay, if you want to start a discussion or just talk to us, um, there's a retracing Discord channel. So we have our, the Forge has its own Discord channel, and then there's a retracing um, ray tracing part in there and you can go there. If you're a game developer and you need help to use the Forge, we're always open to just help. Uh, we make an internal Skype call, uh, Skype channel for you. And then we can directly support you with the Skype channel. Um, we have always several Skype channels running at the same time. Uh, some of them have 16, 20 people in there. Uh, so just, you know, send me an email and then we're looking at uh, how we can support you. Okay, that's it, thank you. Let's see, Rami um, had a question. <laughs> Do you have plans to support NVIDIA, Jetson, um, Ubuntu, uh, ARM 64, Vulkan. I mean, you, you covered some of it, but. Um. When, well, if NVIDIA Jets, Jetson has the RTX interface, um, we probably already support it. We just don't have a, um, a dev kit. But we can run, we could run on there if um, the API is available. Okay, great. And that answers that, I think. Um, and then there was another, there was a question about the Discord channel uh, because you mentioned it at the beginning. So a couple of people asked about that, but um, you gave the link. So um, uh, maybe in the final, um, when we send out um, the final recording to everyone um, and slide decks, we'll make sure that that's also included again in there. Oh, I just see there were questions. People didn't see the demo. They only saw visual. Yeah, yeah, they only saw that. So let me just change that for a second. OK. I have to boot up the application first and then share it. All right, I can do that. OK. So now you should see it, right? Can you see it? Yes, I can see it. OK. So now I can change here the light direction. There's no denoiser, you can see that too. And it runs with about six milliseconds. And then as I said before, it's on GitHub. So it's actually unit test ray tracing. Um, so we use this as a, as a test to make sure our cross-platform ray tracing works. It was actually not meant to be a tech demo. <laughs> um, our aim was much lower. We just wanted to make sure we have something to prove that the ray tracing interface is working on all platforms. Um, what happened actually next was that uh, one person who, who was running a website uh, for Linux 
came by and said, hey, can I use that as a benchmark to compare Linux with Windows performance? And then we said, okay, well, why not? Um, and we added some kind of like easy to use benchmarking tools to, to compare Windows and Linux. And so this whole little unit test um, suddenly became interesting for a larger group of people. So that's the history of this. Um, it was not really intended to impress. It's more as a functional test to prove that our uh, framework works. All right, uh, let me see if there are any other questions. What hardware is the tech demo running on? It's a, in my case, it was a 2070. So NVIDIA RTX 2070. That's what I have here in my home machine. Uh, there was another question, Neil Travit. <laughs> Hi, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> Would it make sense to consider integrating this Vulkan ray tracing into open source layer of Vulkan over metal implementation? like Molten VK. Yes, I mean, you can do this. It's on GitHub. <laughs> it's free. So whoever, whoever works on Molten VK, uh, they can implement it. That's, that's actually a good idea. We, we used, um, uh, for our cross-platform framework, we use Metal directly. So we don't go to Vulkan, but um, for Switch, actually, this might interest some people. We use Vulkan. So the Switch game that will ship this year is actually using Vulkan. It's not the native API. So we're big, big into Vulkan. We have Vulkan on Android, Switch, PC, uh, Windows, and Linux. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, both of you. That was really, really interesting. Thanks for joining us.